Hi, I'm Pattu from Free FinCal, and in this video, let's discuss how to understand mutual fund returns. Now, uh, my last video was that uh, mutual funds do not have any compounding benefit. I expected the reactions to be quite strong, and uh, that was right. So, I want to uh, make some things very clear. First of all, I am not against mutual funds. Okay, I am not against any kind of mutual funds. 60% of my entire net worth is in equity mutual funds. So I am not uh, 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 saying don't invest in mutual funds. I am not saying it's a casino and uh, it's like gambling and all that. I am not saying all that, right? I am only against uh, ignorance and misrepresentation of facts, especially concerning investing in mutual fund risk, especially equity mutual funds by salespeople and AMC guys. They want you to keep investing in the hope that if you just do SIP and do nothing about it, everything will be all right in the future. This is completely wrong. You have to be aware of risks uh, and invest. First be aware of risks and then start investing. First understand that you will not get 20-25% because somebody showed you a pamphlet saying and that is a return from the past. Then you must learn to manage that risk. I have written several articles on how to manage that risk. There is a video on how to reduce risk in your portfolio. You can see that my YouTube channel, although I've been uh, posting frequently only recently, uh, it's actually about four or five years old now. And uh, I have uh, several videos in the uh, old video, so you can have a look at that. So I have uh, showed you how to reduce risk. This was posted just a few months ago, though. Just have a look at that. Uh, before we begin, I have published two posts. Yesterday, I talked about eight ways in which you can combine Nifty Next 50 with active mutual funds. So eight portfolio ideas are there. And today I have posted on uh, lazy stock investing. These are five test stock portfolios created from uh, five Nifty indices. Please go to freefincal.com and uh, have a look at them. You can subscribe to email updates there. I will uh, at some point talk about, uh, make videos out of this, but uh, I have other ideas now. I have so many ideas, thanks to you. Uh, so let's talk about returns. There are three ways to measure returns. Right? The first way is called the absolute return. So let's say I invest 100 rupees and it becomes uh, 120 after 5 months. Then the absolute return is simply the percentage difference. 120 minus 100 by 100, that's 20%. The absolute return does not factor in time. Whether it is uh, uh, 100 becomes 120 after 5 years or 50 years or 15 years, the absolute return will always be 20%. It doesn't take into account time in the picture. The second type of return is called the annualized return or the compounded annualized growth rate, the CAGR. So if 100 becomes 80 rupees after 5 years, the CAGR will be computed using the standard compound interest, uh, uh, compound interest formula that is 100 equal to 80 into 1 plus CAGR to the power 5. That means 1 plus CAGR will be multiplied 5 times. 5 means for 5 years. So I, I uh, uh, revert that equation and calculate CAGR. So, like I explained yesterday, CAGR is the fabricated annual return which we assume to be the same for each of those five years. Now, there is a third type of return called the XIRR or the some people just call it the internal rate of return. Some people call it the extended internal rate of return. That's called that's XIRR. That's also a type of annualized return. So, let's say 100 you invest 100 rupees a month and that becomes 5000 after five years. Each of your monthly in, uh, investment is a lump sum. That uh, That is a lump sum and that lump sum has an individual CAGR, just like in the above case. Now, XIRR essentially is a fabricated annual return where the same CAGR is assumed for all investments. For all the installments, the same CAGR is assumed. And such a CAGR is uh, computed and that's called the XIRR. The, if you remember your... 12th standard, uh, 11th standard differentiation, there's a method called newton raphson method. If you, if you remember it from school, XIRR is calculated using the newton raphson method. It's an, it's an approximation. Uh, you, an exact calculation cannot be found. It's an approximation. The point to note is, according to SEBI, uh, sorry, according to SEBI, all um, investments made or all returns calculated less than 12 months or less than a year will be reported as in the form of absolute return. All returns after that all uh, will be re reported as annualized returns. So typically in the portals that you see in Value Research or Morningstar, they will only calculate annualized return that is the CAGR because they are 
they're calculating from point to point but when you invest most of us will be investing more than once obviously nobody will invest just once so we will need the xirr if you uh, upload your uh, investments in a portal like xirr uh, sorry in a like in a portal like value research sorry the xirr will be automatically calculated by value research i also have automatic tools to calculate that uh, i have a fund tracker too you can check that out so i do not want to explain in detail what is xirr because i've already done this some people asked me yesterday so if you go to the community page of the website or you can search for uh, xirr in my channel uh, i have posted the link to this video uh, cagr versus xirr annualized return a simple explanation so this video was posted about 2 years ago you can have a look this will tell you in detail what is xirr and how it differs from cagr i don't want uh, i don't want to get into uh, this discussion again because i've already done it now you may ask yesterday you said the cagr has problems yes the problem is not with the cagr per se but with the people who use it or misuse it now cagr is a measure of overall growth of the mutual fund investment or the stock investment the cagr is not the return from the fund or the stock every year similarly the xirr is not the cagr of every uh, investment that you make every installment of the sip that you make as long as you understand this there's no problem now let's consider time suppose i i say something was completed in 100 seconds and another uh, person completed the same task in uh, 10 seconds you understand that 100 seconds is longer than 10 seconds but uh, nobody asks what is 1 second how did that 1 second come well that's a good question 1 second is essentially a arbitrary definition which we all agree a universally agreed upon arbitrary definition is 1 second similarly 1 kg is a universally agreed upon arbitrary definition we when i say 100 kg and 1 kg you understand 100 kg is heavier the annualized return is also an arbitrary definition to represent growth of an investment where the returns are variable where every day uh, there are price fluctuations so it's an arbitrary definition that we say we will define the growth by this method and therefore uh, you you don't you don't say okay if if my annualized return is 10% that means my portfolio has grown every year by 10% you essentially it's a relative measure so you must always use two returns you must not use one return in uh, isolation so if i say my portfolio return is 8% and somebody else's or the index's uh, annualized return if i compare it is 8% that means i have my portfolio has done a little better than the index that's all that kind of relative measure is okay with the cagr that is fine but don't dig too much into it and assume uh, just because in the past the, there has been 20% cagr you will get that in future and so on that is completely wrong that is what i have been trying to say again and again uh, do not misuse it and of course sales people will misuse it but that's uh, and amc is also it's don't blame the sales people the amc is also don't care about you they will misuse it they will have the uh, disclaimer saying past performance uh, is not a measure of uh, is not representative of future performance or they will say returns are not guaranteed uh, mutual funds are subject to market risk all in small font but they will highlight prominently last 20 years performance is this last 5 years performance is this and so on so that's uh, inevitable now let's go back to the example that we considered yesterday this is a lump sum investment in icici top 100 10000 invested on 1st january 2003 would have grown to about 1.2 lakhs on december 31st 2014 and that's an annualized return of 22.9% now if this illustration is given to somebody who does not understand much about mutual funds the imagination or the image that that person would have would look like this that 10000 growing nicely like that because that's the power of compounding illustration that's the reason why i keep saying there's no there's no power of compounding or compounding benefit some people have argued no 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 mutual funds or stocks have power of compounding with variable returns that means it can go up or down when i say power of compounding it can never go down right there can never be a negative return there can never be a loss but uh, what is the point in saying there is compounding with loss that's stupidity so this is the kind of imagination that a new investor will have that's completely not true because like i showed yesterday the annual returns are going to fluctuate like this and if i if the 10000 goes through the that annual returns the value will actually the the 10000 will actually go up and down like this 
to calculate the annualized return what we are doing is to essentially take the last red dot here the first red dot here and calculate the annualized return without worrying about the journey which is absurd right i mean so uh, that is the reason why i say treat it as some approximate measure of your growth don't read too much into it so that's why I, that's what i said it's a relative measure of growth so don't use just one uh, one cagr or one xirr compare it with let's say a fixed deposit or let's say an index so you when i say 12% cagr and 10% uh, cagr or xirr we understand that 12% cagr is a little better it has done a little better that is fine there's no problem there but don't start imagining things like 12% uh, would have grown this way 10% would have grown that way and so on that kind of uh, uh, interpretations are wrong just use it as a relative measure and don't read, read too much into it at least CAGR is an exact calculation XARR is an approximate calculations sometimes multiple solutions are possible for the same cash flow I can get two two returns values or three even I have shown that there are three return values possible for the same XARR for example for certain uh, cheat fund calculations depending on the uh, cash flow statements I can get multiple two or three values of XARR which will you choose so it's an approximate measure don't read too much into it sometimes excel will not even be able to calculate the value of xirr because the cash flow is so complex so take it with a big pinch of salt don't so i've seen people uh, uh, especially this uh, new investors they start investing uh, six months ago and they say i've got a xirr of 45 percent that just means nothing first of all to even take xirr as a relative measure you must at least complete one year of investments then only it it has some credibility even then it is a little suspect so don't read too much into it now this is the gain or loss in my equity portfolio since i started investing in mutual funds uh, in june 2008 I just wrote a post about uh, I think last month that I had said that after 10 years my XIRR is 9% but I am not worried but look at the uh, 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 the growth here but before that so in December 2017 when I did my fi personal financial audit which I will be doing now it was 17% but uh, uh, in about 7-8 months it became 9% that's the that's the equity for you so look at this for the first 5 years I had no returns absolutely no returns where is where is magic of compounding here sir please tell me no returns for five years zero returns and overnight it shot up then it dipped went up dipped went up dipped up down up down so please recognize that xirr or CG, cagr is not only um you know it's an actual it's a measure of growth but it also takes into account how do I put a time into it? It takes into account time factor. The reason why my XIRR is 9%, probably when it was here, it was when it was up here or somewhere, I don't know, uh, maybe there it was like 17%. The reason why is because XIRR calculation takes into account the fact that for five years, the portfolio, the gains were flat. Then again, for a few months, it was flat here. Then it was nothing flat here. Then there is a sideways moment here. And then finally, it has fallen down. Uh, this was a few months ago. I've not updated it. I mean, a month ago, maybe it, I'm not updated it. So XIRR also takes into account the time factor. Uh, CAGR also takes into account the time factor. So when you, it is not just about actual profit or gain. It's about profit or gain taking into account the time factor in your portfolio. This 9% does not mean that, uh, oh God, I'm a failure in equity. Oh, look, oh, oh, look at how bad my returns are. It does not mean my portfolio has grown year on year by 9%. That's just stupid. It's obviously not. It has grown uh, at the rate of zero for five years and then shot up, I don't know, maybe uh, <laughs> from zero it went all the way. The gain is like 500. So that should shot up, absolute gain. It's like shot up and then it sort of stayed around. Then it shot up again. So uh, please recognize risks. I can't keep investing. I can't uh, and, ho and hope that uh, you know uh, everything will turn out right because if you keep investing you, if there's a fall the returns will fall i've just shown in a couple of videos ago i've showed that uh, mutual fund sips do not reduce risk this is a, a managed portfolio where i have changed my funds 
uh, I have rebalanced from time to time, at least two or three times I have rebalanced, if I remember, right? So with that, the portfolio is, uh, XIRR is 9%. Now the question is, why am I not worried? I am not worried because returns are not important. Who cares? See, my favorite question is, I always ask in my, uh, in my meetings is, I, I, so there are two friends, one person uh, invested uh, in one instrument, another person invested in another instrument and uh, this A got, uh, now we know, an annualized return of let us say 15%, B got an annualized return of 8%, who is the better investor? This is my question I ask in my talks. Please tell me who is the better investor? The answer is we don't know. Returns don't matter. B could have who have got the lower, who has got the lower return, B could have invested more money than A. So the finally the amount matters. It's not the returns. What is the money that we have actually accumulated? What is it worth? Is the money I have accumulated for my child's education actually enough to send him to college today? Although he is uh, many years away from college. Will I be able to retire with the money today? How, if I retire today, how long can I be financially independent? How long can I generate an income that will beat inflation in retirement? For all these questions, returns don't matter. These are the actual questions. You are not investing to get returns. Please recognize that. You are investing to get money for your future needs. And these are the questions which are going to determine whether you have invested correctly or not, not the returns. So please ask these personal finance questions, pers personal questions I, I should say. And that's the right way to understand mutual fund and growth or the growth of your investments, whether it is in mutual fund stocks or anything else. That's the right way to understand returns. That's the real return. The number doesn't matter. I may, I may have got 9%. So what? I have got enough money. I can, I, I have enough money to retire now. That's good enough, right? That is, that's how you define your success. Or, or, and you, that's that's the way you benchmark your success. You do not look at XIRR, CAGR, and all these. These are all fabrications. I'll repeat that. I uh, I don't care. Uh, many people no no. I disagree and so on. These are all mathematical fabrications. They are not important at all. What really matters is for your future goal. Do you have enough money or not? Right. So for that. You should start investing with some assumed value of return. But when you actually start investing, uh, those calculations that you did on a spreadsheet, uh, this, uh, they're useless because the actual market risk will come into play. So please don't take these returns seriously. You can use those returns to benchmark your portfolio, but use it as relative measures. But what is more important is ask those personal questions. How much is your money actually worth and how far away? Uh, are you from you uh, accomplishing your goal that is the right way to understand mutual fund returns so i will catch you again in another video bye bye